M P L S. That's right, folks. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Hanley Stafford is pinch-hitting for Bud Abbott, who has a bad case of laryngitis and is listening in at home. Costello, come over here. What's the matter with you? Oh, Hanley, I feel so unnecessary. <laughs> Tomorrow is the first day of spring. Yes, and I hope you didn't forget to take that spring tonic I made for you. That sulfur and molasses. Yes, but I'm not going to take any more of that stuff, Hanley. You put too much sulfur in it. Too much sulfur? Yes, this morning when the barber massaged my face, my nose lit up. <laughs> Costello, you got spring fever. Oh, yes, Hanley. I think I'm in love with Marilyn Maxwell. Everywhere I look, I see her face. As I look around this room, even the design on the wallpaper seems to say, Marilyn, 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 Marilyn. <laughs> what was that? A crack in the wallpaper. <laughs> well... You are my road to love. Road to love? Yes, and what detours? <laughs> Marilyn, don't mind Costello. He's got spring fever. Oh, but springtime is romantic, Louis. Suppose, uh, suppose I were to take you in my arms and say, I only have one heart, one heart. What would you say? Two clubs? <laughs> Well, Lewis, <laughs> Lewis, I've got to go now and order my new BVD. BVD? Mm-hmm. That's my brown velvet dress. <laughs> See you later, boys. Hey, Haley, remind me to get rid of my IOU. IOU? Yes, that itchy old underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, talk sense, Costello. Now, <laughs> uh, look, this spring, why don't you do something useful? Plant a garden. It'll cut down your expenses. Look what the headline in the paper says. Cost of living skyrockets. Who cares about the cost of skyrockets? <laughs> living or dead. But if you want me to, I'll play in the garden, Haley. I'll raise flowers like my Uncle Artie Stebbins. He wants cross tiger lilies with pussy willows. What did he get? Hepcats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you dummy. Costello, why don't you raise hyacinths? Have you ever seen a hyacinth in front of the park? Haley, you can't park in front of a hyacinth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about flowers. You like dahlias? Oh, sure. My uncle comes from there. Where? Dahlias, Texas. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, look. I'm going to help you plant a spring garden. Now, the first thing you do is sow the seed. I do what? You've got to sow the seed. I didn't even know it was ripped. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When I say sow, I don't mean sow, S-E-W. I mean sow, S-O-W. Sow. Sow what? <laughs> sow the seed. You see, you've got to sow the seed before you reap it. You sow first and reap later. What kind of talk is that? I used to reap my seed first and my mother would sow it later. <laughs> Costello, when I say reap, I don't mean reap like you rip when you rip. I mean reap like you reap when you sow. Oh, when you say reap like you reap when you rip, you don't mean rip like you rip when you reap. You mean reap like you reap when you sow. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look, Costello, I'll explain what sow the seed means. Suppose you are planting tomatoes. Why do I have to wait till tomorrow? Why can't I plant them today? All right, all right. You're planting tomatoes today. When they grow up, what do you do with them? I eat them. Yes, but you can't eat all of them. Why not? They're my tomatoes. I planted them. I'm going to eat them. You can't eat all those tomatoes alone. I don't eat them alone. Ah, that's better. I eat them with salt and pepper. <laughs> Look, dummy, you got a whole field of tomatoes. You can't possibly eat them all, so you eat what you can and what you can't eat, you can. Certainly. Then again, 
Could I have that again? <laughs> Certainly. Only this time, spread it out. Let me get a good look at it. <laughs> All right. You have a lot of tomatoes. Now, you eat what you can, and what you can't eat, you can. I can what? You can what you can't. I can what I can't? That's right. Henley, I'm willing to forget the whole thing. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I'm trying to tell you, you don't eat all those tomatoes. You only eat what you can. And what you can't eat, you can. There's only one way to settle the whole thing. How's that? We'll throw away the tomatoes and eat the can. <laughs> Look, how do, you, how do you get to know so much about plant and garden? I've listened to experts discuss it on the radio. Don't you ever listen to the radio? Listen to the radio? Yeah. Hanley, I lived in Allen's Alley. I've ridden a range with Red Rider. I've walked the floor with the Quiz Kids. I handled the Novocaine when young Dr. Malone operated on John's other wife. And in spite of you, I still think life can be beautiful. Experience is the best teacher. It happened during the wartime cigarette shortage. What was that? That was Henry. He's just heard the corner store has cigarettes. And when Henry got there... <laughs> Three seconds. That's my best record yet. At the cigarette counter, Henry gladly took whatever brand he could get. Because folks couldn't be choosers in those days of shortages. Henry says... I smoked about every brand there is. But it was worth it. Because that's the way I discovered I really liked camels best. Yes, during the war when cigarettes were short, the experience of smoking whatever brand they could get taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. That was when people's T-zones, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, compared more cigarette brands than they'd normally try in a lifetime. And of all these brands, smokers learned that their T-zones really appreciated camels' rich, full flavor and cool mildness. The result? Today, more people smoke camels than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. <laughs> Time now to light up a camel as Kinney Anna sings, It's the Same Old Dream. I can see a steeple surrounded by people. Oh, how real it all starts to seem. Just as the choir sings, my alarm starts ringing. It's the same old dream. And then my thoughts inspire. A scene by the fire In a cottage close by a stream I know it all by heart now We're about to part now It's the same old dream If you but knew How many times I pretend That I'm with you I'm sure your heart would unbend You'd see me through until my dream had a happy ending I can picture clearly the scenes I love dearly In the center you reign supreme We kiss and I discover I'm a lonesome lover it's the same old dream. Here, I got your beautiful seed catalog. Pick out what you want to plant. Oh, I think I'll plant radishes, onions, carrots, cucumbers, and Brussels sprouts. Well, you don't even know what Brussels sprouts are. I do, too. A Brussels sprout is a cabbage after the withholding tax has been deducted. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Costello, this catalog gives a description of each vegetable. It says the Idaho potato, three inches in circumference, thin-skinned, easy to raise. Listen to this description. Five foot two, eyes of blue, hard to date. What vegetable is that? A Hollywood tomato. <laughs> oh, stop that. I thought you wanted to plant a garden. Oh, I do, Hanley. But my backyard is too small, and I'm just dying to plant some cucumbers. Hey, I've got it, Costello. We'll ask the widow wetwash to let you plant some of the land she inherited from her husband. You knew her husband died. 
Brother, did he take the easy way out? <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Here comes Mrs. Wetwash now. Let me handle this. Oh, good morning, Mr. Stafford. Good morning, Mrs. Wetwash. Well, tomorrow's the first day of spring. It's time to put in a garden. Oh, I wondered what you were doing with that big barrel of peat moss. <laughs> oh, pardon me, that's Costello. <laughs> Go ahead, Costello. Ask her about planting the cucumbers. Mrs. Whitwash, I was wondering if, well, uh, if you, uh, if you and I could, well, maybe get together and... Uh... Oh! He's proposing marriage. Oh! Well, go on, Costello, speak up. I mean, uh, we'll get together and raise a few little things. Oh, and... oh, but Costello, you understand what a great undertaking that would be for the two of us. Oh, yes, but there's really nothing to it, Mrs. Whitwash. All it takes is a wheelbarrow and a gallon of DDT. <laughs> Costello, please. Oh, of course, when they grow up, they'll be a little trouble. The heck they will. We'll cut them down. <laughs> cut them down? But sure. Costello, you just can't go ahead and cut them down. Okay, then we'll train them to climb poles. <laughs> well, to each his own, I always say. <laughs> I hope the kind we raise has plenty of warts. Plenty of warts? Costello, are you out of your mind? And I like them best when they're pickled. <laughs> With you for a father, I wouldn't blame them. Me for a father? Well, yes. Weren't you talking about getting married and raising a family? No, I was talking about raising cucumbers. Oh! <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, let me explain. You see, Costello wants to plant a garden, and he thought you'd allow him to do a little digging on your ground. I'd be glad to give him a plot. Six mm. by four. <laughs> <laughs> and after you spade it, Costello, throw yourself in it, and I'll be glad to cover you over. <laughs> oh, and you can start planting whenever you're ready. <laughs> Come on, Costello Let's go in the seed store And buy some stuff to plant in your garden Gee, they got a lot of garden tools in here Look at this funny-looking rake I never saw one with hair on it before Unhand me, Costello uh -oh. <laughs> Well, it's Skinny Ennis What are you doing in here, Skinny? <laughs> well, I came in here to get some suspenders for my geraniums You put suspenders on geraniums? Why, sure How's going to keep my plants from falling down? <laughs> Henry, that Skinny is an awful dope Using suspenders to keep his plants up. <laughs> Everybody knows you use a belt. <laughs> oh, never mind him. Look, there's a nice plant for your garden. That's laurel. Is it easy to raise? Why, of course. Laurel is hardy. Well, then I better... <laughs> what did you say? I said laurel is hardy. When did laurel become hardy? Costello, laurel has always been hardy. Henry, I've seen them in every one of their pictures, and laurel ain't hardy. You idiot. The laurel I'm talking about grows in a big pot. That's not Laurel, the guy with a big pot is hardy. <laughs> oh, forget about it. Come on, let's buy your seeds. Well, if it isn't Mr. Stafford and Mr. Costello, Ooh. you fought little Mon, you. <laughs> Imagine bumping into you. If we'd have known we were going to boomp into you, we would have jumped out of the way. <laughs> Well, well, what are you doing here? Oh, I stopped by to get some fluors. Fluors? <laughs> oh, sure, Henley. You know what fluors are. That's like lulooks, hooly hooks, and sweet pews. <laughs> I've got to get something. I have to get something that will kill the corner coolers and aunts that are eating my plants. Oh, this kid has got aunts in her plants. <laughs> Well, I must be doshing off. As we say in French, la pâte n'est pas soule and la quiscasse, do you? And a hot pot of pasta vazoule and a kiss of you too. <laughs> Come on, Costello. Today's the clerk coming. Tell him what you want. Ah, gentlemen. As the mad Russian said to Eddie Cantor, how do you do? <laughs> what can I do for you? I'd like to get 10 cents worth of cucumber seeds. Oh, well, as Gabby said to the kingfish, <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> Just follow me right this way to the vegetable department. Our things in Glockamora is that little brook still leaping back. What was that? Must be an Irish potato. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are, a package of cucumber seeds. Just drop them in the ground. You know, cucumbers are hardy. Yes, I know. We... Wait a minute. I thought Laurel was hardy. Oh, Laurel is hardy. 
Also cucumbers. <laughs> now poor Laurel is cucumbers. Oh, no, 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 young man. When I say that Laurel is hardy, I don't mean that Laurel is hardy like Laurel and Hardy in the cinema. I mean that Laurel is hardy like cucumbers are hardy. And both Laurel and cucumbers are hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Says so right here in this catalog. How do you like that? Now they've got our routines and seed catalog. <laughs> oh, shut up, Costello. Mister, do you have any young cucumber plants? As Margaret Truman said to her orchestra leader, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go in. Let's go into this greenhouse. Greenhouse? I don't see any greenhouse. That white house over there is the greenhouse. A white house is a greenhouse? <laughs> of course. And the little red house there is a greenhouse, too. The red house is a greenhouse? Certainly. And the white house is a greenhouse, too? Now you got it. Well, if I got it, I caught it from you. <laughs> Listen, you dummy. A red house or a white house can be a greenhouse. A greenhouse doesn't have to be green. It can be a red house or a white house and still be a greenhouse. Henley, now you've got it. Now I got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Camel presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of It Happened in Brooklyn. And here's Marilyn to sing for Camel fans everywhere. How come you do me like you do, do, do? How come you do me like you do? Why do you have to treat me oh so blue? I ain't done nothing to you. Do me right or else just leave me be Cause I can beat you doing what you're doing to me How come you do me like you do, do, do How come you do me like you do Sat up till daybreak Didn't even sleep a wink My mind was wandering all I did was think and sing The way I've been treated Would drive a gal to drink, to drink How come you do me like you do, do, do How come you do me like you do Why do you have to treat me oh so blue I ain't done nothing to you If you rave, I'll have to get you told Cause I can change your temperature from hot to cold How come you do me like you do, do, do How come you do me How come you do me like you do Smokers, see if this isn't true. Try a camel on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. See if your taste doesn't wake up to new pleasure as it is introduced to the rich, full flavor of camel's superbly blended choice tobaccos. See if your throat doesn't welcome camel's cool mildness. See if camels don't suit your T-zone to a T. You know, a nationwide survey of cigarette preferences among doctors was recently made. Three leading independent research organizations asked 113,597 doctors this question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Well, Costello, Mrs. Wetwash sure has a lot of land here. Just look. Mrs. Wetwash's land is spread out as far as the eye can see. And so is Mrs. Wetwash. <laughs> Shame on you, Costello. Shame on Costello. Making an insulting remark about a lovely lady who was kind enough to let you use her land to plant your garden. How could you do such a thing? What have you got to say for yourself? Oh, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> I'll say you're a bad boy. And what's more, I bet you don't know the first thing about farming. Haley, I come from a long line of men who spent the best years of their lives on farms. Oh, farmers. No, traveling salesmen. <laughs> come on, Costello. Let's get this planning over with. Haley, you have no appreciation of the wonders of nature. 
I get out in the boiling sun, dig my fingers into the soil, plant the seed, cover it with rich topsoil, water it, watch it grow. Then one day I wake up and there it is. And it's all mine. All mine. What? Weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of weeds. Well, make up your mind. What are you going to plant? Well, this hole, I'm going to plant an olive tree, and then I'll leave the next hole empty. Then I'm going to plant another olive tree and leave the next hole empty. Then I'll plant another olive tree. Oh, Costello, what's the idea of leaving empty holes between those olive trees? I've got to have some place to throw the pits. <laughs> oh, you dope. Why don't you plant vegetables? Okay, I will. I'm going to plant tomato seeds and grow lemons. I wait a minute. When does a tomato turn out to be a lemon? As soon as you marry her. <laughs> Attention, everyone. That last joke was 100 years old today. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All right, cut it Happy out, Happy birthday, dear Cut Joe. it out, Costello. I will use you again. <laughs> Listen, why don't you plant some fruit trees? Okay, Henry, I'll plant some orange trees. I'll put the seeds in right now. Now for some more orange seeds. What was that? A navel orange. <laughs> Come on, finish your digging so we can plant the rest of these seeds. Okay, Henley. Wait a minute. Look what I found. Huh? Bones. Look at all these bones. It must be a part of a skeleton. Come on, Henley. Let's get out of here. They're ghosts. Wait a minute. A skeleton is not a ghost? Oh, yes, it is. A skeleton is a ghost that's waiting for a sheet to come back from the laundry. <laughs> come on, Henley. Look at this metal tag. I just dug it up. Read what it says. Herman Wetwash. Uh-oh. Costello, this looks suspicious. Do you suppose Mrs. Wetwash murdered her husband? Why would Mrs. Wetwash murder her husband? Well, he had a lot of money. No, there must be another reason. Yes, he had a lot of money. That's the reason. <laughs> oh, it's so Mr. Costello! Oh, here comes that murderous Mrs. Wetwash. Let's get out of here, Hanley, before she kills us. Ah. We'll go and get a detective and solve this case. Come on. Why those boys ran off so fast My, why, look what they've done to my garden Herman, Herman <laughs> Yes Herman. Herman, those naughty men dug up all the bones you buried <laughs> Those rats oh. <laughs> now, now you'll have to bury them all over again But Herman, where's your dog tag? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> You naughty dog. That's the third tag you've lost this month. What have you got to say for yourself? I'm a bad dog. <laughs> well, here we are, Costello. Yeah. Here's the detective agency. Let's go in. Okay. You call yourself a detective? You ingrate. You traitor. I'll never forgive you. You ruined me. I'll get even. I'll get revenge if it's the last thing I do. I'm ruined. Ruined. <laughs> Mr. Detective, what's the matter with him? His wife was missing and he hired me to find her. <laughs> what's she so angry about? I found her. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, what can I do for you? We came to report a murder. Oh, I see. And you brought the murderer with you. Just a minute. I didn't commit any crime. Oh, no? No. Where were you on the night of May 5th, 1949? 1949? That's two years from now. A pretty weak alibi. <laughs> Say, Costello, I could use a bright boy like you in this office. I've got a client that's a beautiful blonde, 19 years old, Blue eyes and a gorgeous figure. What is it worth for you to watch her day and night? The most I could give you is $80 on my new car. <laughs> Come on, Costello, let's get out of here. We'll solve this case ourselves. <laughs> Herman, Herman, get in the house with those bones. Here comes Stafford and Costello. I'll take care of them for digging up your bones. <laughs> if you don't, I will. <laughs> Now, don't accuse her outright, Costello. Murder's a serious charge. Be subtle. Well, Whitwash, I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you. Digging in my yard and leaving poor Herman's bones scattered around. <laughs> well, you certainly disturbed the appearance of the garden. That's nothing to the way you disturbed the appearance of poor Herman. <laughs> Mrs. Whitwash, why did you bury Herman's bones in your garden? Why, well, I didn't bury Herman's bones. 
Herman carried them there and buried them himself. Oh. <laughs> that I would like to have seen. <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, may I ask you a question? Certainly. How did poor Herman spend his last few hours? Uh, chasing cats. You see, Henley, even on his deathbed, he tried to get away from her. <laughs> deathbed? What are you talking about? How did your husband Herman die? Oh, my husband Herman. He was lost at sea. Well, it must have been a pretty high tide because his bones washed up in your backyard. <laughs> oh, those bones. Do you deny that these bones belong to Herman Wetwash? Certainly not. But you see, there are two Herman Wetwashes. Herman Wetwash the dog and Herman Wetwash my husband. You see, I fell in love with Herman the minute I felt his cold nose and floppy ears. Your husband? No, the dog. <laughs> you see, I married Herman 20 years ago in San Francisco. The dog? No, my husband. <laughs> but Mrs. Wetwash, how do you explain the bones Costello dug up? Oh, Herman, be quiet, be quiet. Now, Costello. When you found Herman Wetwash's bones, you didn't find the bones of Herman Wetwash. The bones you found were Herman Wetwash's bones, but they were not the bones of Herman Wetwash. Oh, now I've got it. <laughs> now he's got it. He don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> Get me out of here, Haley. Our routines are going to the dogs. <laughs> Hadley Safford and Lou Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Phoenix, Arizona, U.S. Army Walter Reed General Hospital, Washington, D.C., U.S. Naval Hospital, Key West, Florida, U.S. Marine Hospital, Fort Worth, Texas, and Veterans Hospital, Jackson, Mississippi. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now back to Hanley Stafford and Lou Costello. Well, Costello, next Thursday is Marilyn Maxwell's birthday. Yes, Hanley. And if I had some money, I'd buy her a beautiful present. All right. Next week, I'll help you invest your money in the stock market. You know, my father has a seat on the curb. Yes, I know. I see him sitting there every day with his feet dangling in the gutter. <laughs> oh, Costello, you're impossible. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night. Listen to Abbott and Costello next Thursday when they do their new routine on Docks and Blondes. Oh, Mr. Roy, that's Docks and Bonds. Why, why do you always make these mistakes? Oh, I'm a bad announcer. <laughs> Mr. Pipe Smoker, is your pipe just a pipe or is it packed with pipe appeal? A pipe has pipe appeal when it's packed with Prince Albert's A Happy Pipe Smokers everywhere. Yes, with Prince Albert, you get rich, full flavor and cool mildness, too. Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Crimp cut to burn slow and even. Try Prince Albert. More pipe smoke PA than any other tobacco. Saturday night, hear Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry on NBC. Hear American folk songs as only Red Foley sings them. Laugh with the Duke of Paducah and Minnie Pearl. Remember, that Saturday night on NBC for Grand Ole Opry. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. The American Red Cross is important in peace as it is in war. Disasters of fire, flood, and accident know no season or time. When they occur, the Red Cross takes care of the victims. That is why the American Red Cross needs $60 million from contributions this year. That is why you are asked to give as generously as ever this year, because your contribution is needed as much as ever. Abbott and Costello will soon be seen in the new Universal International picture, Buck Privates Come Home. Thanks to Hanley Stafford for a fine job of pinch hitting for Bud Abbott, who will be back with us next Thursday night. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camo. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. The National Broadcasting Company.